In this video, I'm going to be going over the best way to blend colored pencils, as well as giving you an in-depth demonstration of each way, and giving you ways to utilize each one of those blending methods. Welcome! For those of you who are new, I am Jessica Matheny, the artist of Jessica Matheny Fine Art. On this channel, I offer time lapses of my drawings and paintings, as well as tutorials and tips. Let's get into blending colored pencils. So in a previous video I've done, I demonstrated a bit and talked about the ways I blend my colored pencils. If you haven't already seen that video, I will put a link above and in the video description for you to check out. That video will be a part one to blending, and this video will be a part two where I'm going to demonstrate those methods more in depth. The first way to blend colored pencils is by burnishing. The middle circle here is where we'll be at. We will go over solving in just a bit. The colors that I'm using for this demonstration are a light and dark shade of red and a light and dark shade of purple and violet. First, with burnish blending, you should have a good few layers of colored pencil on the paper, and then you will apply more colored pencils to the paper with a bit of pressure to increase the amount of colored pencil you are applying over time. As you apply more and more of the colored pencils to the paper with pressure, this blends the colors together. The best way to do this is to use multiple colors to be sure that you are getting tones correctly. As in the demonstration, it is a gradient of two colors, and it is best achieved to use some mid-range colors between the two colors to get that gradual color transition. This method of blending can get you fast results depending on what you're doing. For fur, it is really fast, but for objects and surfaces, I feel like it takes longer than blending with solvent, even though solvent takes 15 minutes of dry time between layers. When drawing fur, I feel like this method is the most useful because you won't need to blend it all out very thoroughly. Fur is best done by burnished strokes that will not be blended out by just getting a couple of good base colors in there and then adding darker strokes over it with burnishing. Blending by burnishing works best on smooth papers like Bristol Vellum or Bristol Smooth. Papers with more tooth will grab the color instead of blending them smoothly together. The second way to blending is with a blending pencil. There are lots of different kinds of blending pencils. I am using a Derwent blender. You first want to get a good couple of layers of colored pencil on the paper. It works best when you have more layers on the paper before you begin blending. That way there is more colored pencil to work with. You then apply a lot of pressure with the blending pencil as you draw over your layers. If you are going to use this method to blend your colored pencils, I recommend this as a final blend because it smooths out the surface and makes it difficult to add more layers on top after blending. One of the ways you can use this method of blending also is if you want a more roughed up look, a sort of uneven texture, that would work great for rocks or other textured surfaces you may be drawing like wood. You would just want to use less layers of colored pencil so that the blend won't be as smooth. And lastly, the third method to blending colored pencils is with solvent. I use the Mona Lisa brand of odorless mineral spirits. It is a form of solvent, but what's great about it is it doesn't have a strong odor. You can buy it at any arts and crafts store or on Amazon. I also use various round Taclon paint brushes and a watercolor brush. We will go over the different brushes and how I use them in just a bit. In a previous video, I covered the hazards to using solvent and how to properly handle and dispose of solvent waste, filter out pigments, as well as some other things. Again, the link to that video is above and in the video description. I feel that solvent is the best way to blend colored pencils. It offers a very thorough blend of different colors and allows you to add more layers on top so easily. The great thing about solvent is that it allows you to use your colored pencils almost like watercolors. And when your paper is dry after blending, the colors are semi-permanent into the paper. This provides you another way to utilize this method of blending. You can blend into the paper, and if it is too strong of a color, you can erase to lighten it up, or even erase to add some hair or other details to it. Let's go over how to start blending with solvent. Make sure you have a little jar of some sort to store your solvent in that you will be dipping your brushes into so that you do not get the entire container of solvent dirty with colored pencil pigments. Also, it is wise to clean your brush off between blending areas of different colors by dipping it in the solvent and mixing it around and then wiping the brush on a paper towel in a circular motion so that you don't ruin your brush. And this way your brush is clean and will not transfer unwanted colors to other areas of your drawings. So begin first 
So to begin, you first add a few layers on your paper. And with this method, I don't feel like you have to get a whole lot on there if your drawing doesn't have much color to begin with. There are plenty of times that I only blend one layer into the paper because what I'm working on is a lighter color and has very little hints of some other colors. But I also use cream or white paper with my colored pencils. So then I don't have to use much of my white or lighter colors anyways. You then dip a brush into the solvent, wipe off the excess with a paper towel, and then blend it into the paper. Allow it 15 minutes to dry completely before adding more layers on top. If you do not let it dry, you could damage the tooth of the paper and that will make it harder for you to add more layers on top later. So now let's go over some brushes you could use. A few different types will give you the ability to do different things. I use gold Taclon round brushes and a watercolor brush. Using small brushes will allow you to blend tiny areas of your work. This is handy for blacks or dark colors especially, where you need to get a good blend to eliminate the white of the paper. And this will allow you to get more black layers on top as well, so you can get those blacks really dark. Now let's go over techniques with blending. When you blend it in a tight circular motion, you can get a really nice and smooth blend. This is useful for blurry backgrounds or areas that you need to be soft looking in your work. I am using a number eight watercolor brush. To do this, dip your brush, wipe it on the rim of your solvent jar to catch most of the excess for reuse instead of just dipping it all in the paper towel. And then take the brush between your fingers and the paper towel and pinch it two to three times to remove the unwanted solvent from the brush. Then you will start to blend. Because you have less solvent on the brush, it won't be too long before you need to redip your brush and do this whole process again of removing the excess. The less solvent you have, the better your smooth blend will be. Too much solvent will make your blend runny and uneven. Press the brush down to the paper with mild pressure and then move the brush with very little movement in little circles. The more movement you put into it will create streaks and we don't want streaks for smooth blending. Depending on the amount of solvent you keep on the brush, you can blend smoothly or create streaks. More solvent allows you to spread the color farther around and less keeps the color relative to where you applied them. If you blend in a side to side streaky way, you can get some noticeable lines with uneven placement of the pigment on the paper. This is useful for fur on animals, hair, or even textures that have a similar streaky appearance. To do this, you dip your brush in the solvent, wipe off the excess on a paper towel, and just go back and forth with your brush. You can wipe off less on the paper towel as well, and that will create more uneven distribution of color, which is great for fur, rocks, woods, those kinds of textures. I am going over the colored pencil with a number seven brush now. Larger brush sizes will give you a greater uneven blend. The goal with blending in this streaky way is to not fully blend out your strokes, to leave noticeable colored pencil strokes and preserve those, but to unevenly move around pigments. When you do this, it doesn't require a lot of pressure with a brush to the paper, but if you want to pick up more pigment to move around, you can use more pressure and also apply more colored pencil. For the last one, I will demonstrate how you can spread the colored pencil to other areas of the paper. Solvent is really great because it allows you to use your colored pencils a bit like watercolors using more solvent. Using a number seven brush for this, you are going to dip your brush, wipe it off a little bit of the excess on the rim of the jar. Do not use a paper towel for this one because you want more solvent on the brush. And then put the brush in the center of the colored area you want to blend out and begin making streaks away from the center. Like here I'm pulling it out onto the edges. This works better if you have a great deal more colored pencil on the paper. The colors will travel farther. I have used this technique when working on feathers and fur because you can create a very nice and gradual gradient of color that is much softer than if you just use the pencil to create strokes and blend it over it. So here's a recap of those different techniques with the smooth one I used, that watercolor brush because the bristles are softer than the gold tacklon that I used for the streaky and spread. Stiffer brushes move around pigments more. I hope that this video was helpful to you. If you are interested in other colored pencil tips, you should check out this video I did of some colored pencil hacks. I will have a link to it in the video description as well. That's it for this video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. What is your favorite paper to work with when you're drawing with colored pencils? I would love to know. Let me know in the comments section. And 
be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook to stay up to date on all of my latest artworks as well as the happenings of my studio. Thank you for watching. See you next time.